to another My Name Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are diving into yet again another top five countdown, if you will. And I thought yesterday, I was going to post yesterday, I thought we were going to have some AEW action figure news, but apparently that will be releasing Saturday. So stay tuned Saturday, guys. We're going to have some brand new AEW action figure news that I am excited to cover for you guys. So stay tuned for that. But today, man, we're going to dive into our top five worst WWE Ultimate Edition figures. Now, I know that we did rank the set from worst to best, but we do have some different things intertwining and things like that, so... And that was like five or six months ago that we made that video, so I think that we are uh, up for another round because I think we got some new additions and things like that, so... I went through all of the Ultimate Editions. I tried to calculate it up. You know, this is my own personal opinion. I know that a lot of people are probably going to have some problems with this list, and I already know that based on other videos that I've covered, based on other opinions that I've stated in the past... And so, I know it's probably going to be kind of controversial, but you know what, man? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with my list? Do you not like my list? Do you hate these figures? Do you enjoy these figures? Let me all know all of those things down in the comment section below, man. But I love top five countdowns. I love ranking things. I love sports. I love to, you know, to analyze and things of that nature. So, we're going to do that here today, man. So, let's go ahead and dive into my top five personal worst WWE Ultimate Edition figures. Now, before we get into the top five real quick, guys, I just want to say that I I do love this line. I love that what we've gotten. You know, I love uh, the, the some of the best figures in the set are incredible, and they continue to pump those out. And I can't wait to get the new ones that we're getting: the Hulk Hogan, the Triple H, the Ultimate War, the Jeff Hardy. So really excited for those figures, man. But today we're talking about the worst of the worst, and I gotta break into it, man. So let's go ahead and start off with number five. Now coming in at number five for me personally, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Now I think a lot of people are gonna be like the Fiend Bray. Wyatt? How could you put the Fiend Bray Wyatt in the... Just listen to me for a split second. We can break all the things down and we can get into it. So I think one thing that uh, makes the Ultimate Edition so awesome and the Ultimate Edition line so great is the cloth goods, right? The cloth goods that we get, you know, the, the extra accessories and things of that nature. So with the Fiend Bray Wyatt, man, you guys know that they did throw the jacket over it. It's the rubber jacket with the jacket sleeves. Interchangeability. Not my favorite feature of the figures. Like, it's a cool idea and everything like that. It's just not my favorite. I would much rather have the regular figure and then, you know, throwing a nice cloth fiend jacket that he used to wear. You know, I, I think that would have been a much better uh, of choice. I think that would have been just a much better feature. Also, one thing that I cannot stand about the fiend figure is how stumpy he looks. I don't know why he looks so stumpy, but it's like they, they didn't make him tall enough or something. The legs aren't long enough. If you compare Bray Wyatt figures, I think the Bray Wyatt figures are taller than the Fiend figures, which doesn't really make sense in the grand scheme of things. Also, I think Bray Wyatt's supposed to be like six foot three, and he does not look six foot three when you plug his Fiend figure in with other figures. The legs just look a bit stumpy, even though I love Bray Wyatt. I love, you know, I love the character design in figure form, you know, like he's just a badass looking character, right? The Fiend looks so sick, but in figure form, I felt like he was a little bit stumpy, so I put him at my number five, which did pain me. I just think the execution wasn't all there, and also, like his interchange head we had the one tongue out head sculpt and then just the other so we only got two head sculpts with this guy so for those reasons I put him at the number five spot also I did want to look at the figure right here like the legs are just kind of stumpy man I think if the legs were just a little bit bigger I think I would like it a lot more his legs are a little bit stumpy for me so another thing also that I forgot about is they didn't even sculpt like a belt on the crotch they didn't even give us a sculpted belt on there and I think that's kind of you know that deducts a little bit of football points I would have liked to have seen a sculpted belt on the guy coming in at the number four spot guys I'm going with Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It's really not the worst figure ever. I think one thing that really I don't really like about the figure is, first of all, we do have the rubber interchangeable stuff going on again. You know, it's not a cloth, nice long sleeve like Matt Riddle's jacket or even his Elite 63 figure, which is another thing. This figure, one, its best head sculpt is a repeat re release of the Elite 63 Shinsuke Nakamura head sculpt. The other interchangeable head sculpts I wasn't the biggest fan of. I didn't see the likeness of Shinsuke Nakamura more, which is a big indicator of how good not only an Ultimate Edition is, but how good a figure is, is the likeness in the head sculpt. I wasn't really seeing the likeness on the Shinsuke figure. Also, his torso is kind of like unappealing looking. It just doesn't look the best as far as ult other Ultimates go. You know, Brock Lesnar looks pretty good, and some of those other Ultimate Editions that really flow nicely. I didn't really get that from Shinsuke. His, his torso is a bit odd, and it was just kind of like really, really similar to his Elite figures, and we just got the Elite 
363 Shinsuke, which I thought was a great figure as well. But I don't know. It's just not my favorite Ultimate Edition. It's just kind of a boring Ultimate Edition. And for that reason, I have him at my number four spot. I love Shinsuke. I think, you know, the figure's not bad per se, but as far as Ultimate Editions go, it's not my favorite selection. Coming in at number three, ladies and gentlemen, I went with Becky Lynch. Now, this one may be controversial because you know what, Brad? I'm not even going to lie to you. The attire that they chose for this is great. I love the attire. The black and yellow Kill Bill inspired gear is super sick. You do get the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championships. The biggest thing for me is that the likeness on this figure looks nothing like Becky Lynch. I know that Mattel has come out, Bill has even come out and said that he worked very long and hard on this Becky Lynch figure and the likeness and trying to get, he wanted it to capture Becky Lynch perfectly and I think it's one of those things where maybe he put too much time into it to where it ended up not looking like her at all. I, I don't see Becky Lynch whatsoever in these head sculpts and I think if like her Elite 72 figure was much stronger of a head sculpt, I think even the basic that I saw which the head sculpt with is much stronger as well. The likeness to Becky is there. The Elite 85 is much stronger of a head sculpt. So her interchangeable head sculpts weren't very good. My legs are also super duper. I actually think I may have leg swapped this and made it loose on accident. But I wasn't a big fan of the fishnets that they chose for it. And it had like that weird sock boot like thing, which people tell me that's how it was. It just didn't, I don't know, it wasn't appealing in figure form for whatever reason. But I love the Kill Bill inspired gear. I really do. I, you know, I love Becky Lynch and stuff like like that but man the head sculpts looked nothing like Becky Lynch and that figure I think goes for like upwards of $200 or something like that and I do not understand that because it does I guess just because it's the only Becky Lynch but uh, I, I don't know man it just wasn't my favorite the head sculpts look nothing like Becky Lynch and uh, it really took me out of the figure like it was like oh my god I can't even like what is this so I know we can head swap I know we can do those things but you got to take those things into consideration like as a stock figure man it just wasn't my favorite and uh, yeah I had to put Becky Lynch at the number three spot. Coming in at number two, now this is going to be kind of controversial, I'm sure, again, but I'm going with the brand new series. Is it series 11? I can't even remember the series. I'm going with the brand new Undertaker Ultimate Edition figure. You guys can probably agree with me on this. This figure got a ton of uh, flack, not only on social media, just all the different boards that I've seen as well, man. This figure has gotten just shat upon. The uh, head sculpts, everybody, you know, making the memes about Michael Jackson. It does look looks similar to a Michael Jackson head sculpt on the stock figure. The torso looks really, really odd. How it goes from like gigantic up top to smaller on the bottom there. Uh, a lot of people like even the interchangeable head sculpts they are very weird. They don't fit the time frame. They're like from older Undertakers and like I don't even think Undertaker was doing the tongue out with the eyes rolled back in his head at the time that uh, this figure is supposed to be based on I don't think so. There's just a lot of weird things about this Undertaker figure. It's it's just not my favorite man. It, it The entrance coat is rubber also like I know you can say what you can say but Defining Moments had some pretty nice you know they, they had some cloth integrated with the rubber and things like that and it's just like a weird looking figure man it just looks odd with the gigantic torso again the head sculpts are not great they also integrated like old Undertaker head sculpts into this era of Undertaker right here which is very odd as well so it's just one of those figures that's just very odd choices and at the end of the day man it's just not my favorite I put it at the number two worst Ultimate Edition so far and it could end up being better once I have it in hand and pose it around and I hope that it is but at this juncture man I have that at the number two worst ultimate edition that we've seen so far now cracking my number one the worst ultimate edition ever made I am going to go with the ultimate edition edge figure now I know a lot of people don't agree with that and I'm not talking about the moment okay I love edge he's one of my favorites of all time he's, he's great he's fantastic he has multiple amazing elite figures. I think that, you know, the, the elites that we've gotten since he's returned has been fantastic as well. Just this ultimate edition right here. You'll notice that I do have the t-shirt on the guy. It's because the torso was just ugly, man. It reminded me a lot of that finishing moves edge figure that Jax, re that Jax released so long ago. And it was just, it's just not an appealing figure. Also, my legs are super stiff. The head sculpts are very odd choices as well. He does have, the, again, the interchangeable jacket entrance arms, which I thought wouldn't be the biggest deal, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking now more, and I'm not a fan of it. I think the trench coat is really, uh, it, like, it's nice and detailed, obviously. It looks good and everything like that, but I think, again, a nice trench coat. They wouldn't have been able to give us all the details because it would have been cloth, but I think a cloth jacket or interchangeable jacket or entrance jacket 
would have been really nice as well. It's just something about the torso just looks off-putting to me. I don't think they left off the chest hair and stuff like that. And I think it's just a little bit of a skinny torso for the Edge figure. You guys know that we did torso swap our Elite with the uh, Elite 23 Cesaro, and that looked much better. I don't know if... Uh, I know they used the same one on the Finn Balor, but it was a Demon Finn Balor, so it was kind of covered up. They used the same for Shawn Michaels, but I felt like it worked better for Shawn Michaels. Also, Shawn Michaels did have the chest hair on there. So there's just a lot of different things about the Edge figure. It's just not my favorite. Like, when I look at it, I don't get excited about it. I should be excited about an Ultimate Edition Edge figure, and it just doesn't do it for me. So I feel like, you know, it's pretty, uh, I don't know. It just, it, it, it landed flat for me. I was really, really hyped for that figure. And once it released, I was super disappointed. Also, this figure shot right here, I mean, just look at it, man. What is that? I don't, I don't know what we're doing here, but it's like a Calvin Klein model Edge. I don't know. It's just not my favorite, man. I don't know what it is. I'm just not a fan of the figure, and I think his Elite's much better. I like the idea of the pissed off raging edge, but with the hair blowing back was an odd choice as well. Or maybe like a pre spear face where he's like, you know, waiting on the guy to get up or something like that. I don't know, man. It just wasn't my favorite, so I put Edge at the number one worst Ultimate Edition. But I want to know down below, guys, what you think the worst Ultimate Edition WWE action figure is. I know a lot of people don't like some of the other figures in the set, but I feel like WWE and Mattel have a very good track record of these Ultimate Editions, man. Like, you know, the Rock figure's amazing, the Hollywood Hogan's amazing, the Finn Balor, I think the Ronda Rousey, the Brock Lesnar, the John Cena's, the HBK, the Macho Man is great, the Ric Flair is solid, the Ultimate Warrior, even the Rock figure. I thought the Rock figure was kind of meh when I first saw it released, but then getting it in hand, it's really damn good too. So, I don't know, man. Let me know what you think the worst Ultimate Edition is down in the comment section below, or maybe your worst five, and maybe give me your best Ultimate Edition ever as well. But that is pretty much going to wrap up today's video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the ranking of the top five worst Ultimate Editions that Mattel has ever done. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you whatever? But uh, at the end of the day, man, do not cross the line like the Ultimate Edition Edge, man. Just look at him. Just look at him. I need to torso swap this and then put a different head sculpt on it. I had to put the t-shirt on. Oh, with the t-shirt on it, doesn't even look bad. Like, honestly, doesn't even look like the worst Ultimate Edition. Also, I'm noticing they also put the graphic over the articulation right there. So when you articulate it, it, it breaks up the graphic, which I don't like. But uh, I don't know, man. Just could have been a lot better in my in my opinion. But uh, don't cross the line like the the this whole countdown actually. You cross the line.